Hello Nikki fans, Happy New Year! I hope everyone had a good and safe break, and for the first video of 2021, we'll take a look at upcoming games in the action RPG space, which is a genre near and dear to my heart. Of course, these titles tend to be more ambitious and require larger teams, so it's not just limited to indies, with special mention, of course, going to Diablo 4. The sequel to the largest ARPG franchise was revealed in 2019, and as someone who grew up with this series, it does have my attention. The next major news for it will likely come in February during BlizzCon Online, and with that, let's get into the list. Dark Alliance Dungeons & Dragons comes in at number 15 simply because there's not enough information on it. Revealed during the Game Awards 2019, the game has been radio silent since then, but as far as we know, this will be set in Icewind Dale with characters from a novel series, so expect to see plenty of familiar faces if you're into D&D. Being part of the Dark Alliance franchise, these were companion games to the main CRPG games like Baldur's Gate, using this to differentiate itself as the action RPG variant, but another entry 17 years after the last is an interesting prospect. Tribes of Midgard does have one of the most gorgeous art styles out there, once again utilizing Norse mythology, where you play as Vikings fighting against giants during Ragnarok and trying to hold out for as long as you can. While it looks super sweet, there are survival, crafting and base building elements, as well as up to 10 player co-op, which some people might take issue with for it not being as pure. However, the action looks great, the art style awesome, and the enemy design's pretty good, so I'm interested in this. Ika, do not listen to what they say. You are no witch. Then why are you sending me away, Papa? It is time. Vamonos. This gem, it was given to you at birth. Keep it with you at all times. It will lead you to your destiny. With it, you will prove that you are no witch, but a god. A very interesting entry is Aluna Sentinel of the Shards, perhaps the first pure ARPG on the main list that we have gameplay footage of. It uses the Incan mythology and is being set in the 16th century, so it's something a little bit different. Although I'll admit, the art style does look a little dated, but that may be a stylistic choice. I guess looking more like Diablo 2 than 3, but since it is using a different mythology, I'm still interested in this. Literally just covered the Rift Breaker in my last video, being one of my most anticipated indie games of the year, so I won't bang on about it, but again, not as pure since it does have base building and automation elements. However, it does look stunning and if you enjoy killing hordes of enemies, this might be of interest to you as well. A title which has a little bit of a generic but very classic grim dark gothic aesthetic is Spark in the Dark, where you traverse through an underground dungeon, slaying enemies along the way. It looks like it has a nice variety of weapons and enemies, 4 character classes, RPG leveling mechanics and procedurally generated environments, so it does look pretty cool in my opinion. One of the very indie entries that I'm looking forward to is The Slawmancer, a pixel art dungeon crawler with 3 character classes, a warrior, a rogue and a mage, so do tell me if it seems familiar. This game appears to throw hordes of enemies at you as well, with there being epic loot and an infinite upgrade system, so you can always make some form of progress in this. There is an ancestral skill tree system with elemental magic, unique weapons and the flexibility to respec your character, so it seems like this developer does know what makes this genre great. 
It is certainly more similar to games like Chronicron other than Torchlight, but nonetheless an ARPG to keep an eye on. The action RPG tends to be tied into MMOs as well, since there's just something to the grand epic fantasy scale of everything, and a title which looks to be of interest is Magic Legends, which is based on the Magic the Gathering property. You are playing as a powerful, spell-wielding planeswalker, aka the player avatar in the card game, where you are slinging spells and summoning monsters in real time looking like a very awesome entry, especially if you are not a fan of card games. For 2021, I want to make this channel bigger and better than ever before, but to do that, I will need your help. Please take a couple of minutes to fill out the survey form linked below. Thank you for the help, and back to the video. Ukraine developed Core Punk is another MMO action RPG which looks to mash together several fantasy genres and inspirations, having a classic Diablo-style isometric camera angle and combat, an art style reminding me of Torchlight, real-time strategy elements like Fog of War and health bars, and a character creation screen that very much looks like WoW. There are four main cultures and biomes in this game, from a cyberpunk city, a faction that communes with nature, one that's basically steampunk, and another of warriors from the desert, and it is in this world where you adventure. As with most MMOs, I don't think that there will be any major story through line per se, but I do think that it looks like a great world to explore. certainly more on the MMO side of things, which may not be what you're looking for, but if you are, the closed beta is planned for Spring 2021, and if you're interested, there's a link to sign up on their website. Toxic atmosphere, penetrating cold, and terrifying darkness. You won't make it alone, believe me. Unless, with a little bit of help from other Gatewalkers. Another awesome ARPG entry is Gatewalkers, incorporating survival elements and based on the alpha version released on Steam last year, the reception seems to be pretty good. It's fairly rudimentary in the survival and crafting systems, such that it does not overwhelm the ARPG portion, with some commenters comparing this to Albion Online. Get ready for the adventures which await you. Reveal secrets buried in mysterious constructions and defeat their guardians. There is perhaps, unfortunately, a co-op focus as well for up to 4 players with no auto-aim and skill-based combat as well as no character classes and procedurally generated worlds, conveniently tied to the gates as in the title, so it seems well thought out and is one to check out for 2021. Last Epoch entered Steam Early Access in May 2019, so it has been about a year and a half, with the reception since then being fairly great for this time-warping action RPG. Similar to Gatewalkers just mentioned, the different time periods do give the developers an excuse to put everything from dinosaurs, dragons and monsters in this wrapped up pretty nicely, and I do appreciate it when there's an in-game explanation for such mechanics and systems. There are 5 base classes which can each specialize into one of 3 mastery classes for a total of 15, where every skill has their own augmentation skill tree with the usual loot and endless procedurally generated levels that we have come to know and love.
As of recording, this is currently in phase 3 or 4 of the development's roadmap, although it is already in version 0.9, so perhaps we'll see the 1.0 launch sooner rather than later, and it's definitely one to check out. Growing up in Singapore, I have distinct memories of posters of games like MU Online, MapleStory, Ragnarok Online and Lineage being plastered all over land cafes in my youth, which is quite a fascinating thing to think about given how World of Warcraft and Final Fantasy XIV are perhaps the two biggest MMOs these days. But 20 years on, many of these games that I mentioned somehow have found a way to survive and still have active communities. The Korean title Lineage is of interest here since Project TL, or The Lineage, is supposed to be the third and final entry in the series, and much like the indie game White Whales that we were talking about, was announced in 2011 but has still not been released as of recording in 2021. The working title was given in 2017 and there have been very sporadic updates, but given how great the action looks, I do have my eye on this. As a high fantasy world of elves and goblins, of epic armies, siege warfare at large scale battles, all polished up with modern visuals which look amazing. One thing to note is that the siege section in this trailer does look a little bit too close to Act 3 in Diablo 3, but then again, this was a trailer from two years back. While MMO action RPGs do have their downsides due to the game structure, from what I remember of those classics, you should still have a pretty good time with the action, assuming the monetization is not too aggressive. As always, stay tuned to this channel and I'll let you know if there are any movements on this front. Like Dark Alliance above, Alaloth, Champion of the Four Kingdoms is an action RPG that kind of looks like a traditional isometric CRPG with vibes of Baldur's Gate, Icewind Dale and even Dragon Age Origins from the overall look. Action however is in real time and is most interesting since it's an open world RPG where you're able to adventure in the kingdoms of human, elves, orcs and dwarves. Plenty of player customization, NPCs to recruit, and character customization just sweetens the deal, so if you're at all interested in this genre, do keep an eye on this for 2021. Alright, so this one may be big news, but as with anything to do with this game, I'll be cautious until it is actually out, since yes, the long anticipated Korean action MMORPG Lost Ark might just make it to the West this year, having tied up with Amazon Games for distribution. What you're seeing here is the footage from Season 2 of the game, which looks like it has revamped some visuals, added new character classes, and of course, more areas and bosses as well. I 
I've mentioned this in my video on the best games like Diablo, and while some people have lamented its MMO nature due to the microtransactions, we'll see how the actual balance is if it finally comes out. Regardless, one of the most gorgeous modern games in the genre, with a huge variety of character classes, this might just be the next title to take over the gaming world. This is, or was, the Ascent Group main metropolis. Like you, most people have contracted their entire lives away to get here. Workers or indents, slaves in all but name. The Ascent Group Arcology on Valus has shut down. If the latter is true, corporate grab teams will already be moving in. For better or worse, Cyberpunk will continue to be a theme in 2021 with The Ascent, set in a world where corporations own human beings, but the largest one of these just collapsed and as a former piece of property, you now have your freedom back. But how to survive in this new world is the interesting bit. Other factions, crime syndicates and rival companies will rush to fill the power vacuum where you need to prevent this from happening and to find out what caused the collapse. Awesome look as well, looking to take advantage of current gen power, with the focus again being on skill based combat and cybernetic augmentations being intriguing aspects. I think that enough has been said about Path of Exile and developer Grinding Gear Games seeming to be the model for modern ARPGs with a completely free entry monetized through cosmetics and stash slots with what seems to be a good working environment and a clever way of engaging their community. So when Path of Exile 2 was announced, it did get me intrigued. However, similar to oddities like Overwatch 2, this is a whole new 7-act story campaign that will exist alongside the original, with both leading to the same endgame titled Atlas, which does make it somewhat of a weird structure. New Ascendancy classes, revamped skill gem socketing system, new equipment and more await, and as someone who has an admiration for this game and the team, it takes the number one spot. To see more of the big picture, check out these awesome videos and I will see you after the jump.